Hi everyone, I'm Dean Atali, or the shiny guy, and welcome back to Debugging with Dean. Now, last week was my very first video, and it got really good responses, so I decided to, well, first of all, buy a proper microphone, and also to make you another video. Now, if I continue to see that there's still good feedback, if there's you know comments, likes on the video, or subscriptions maybe, then I'll just keep making more of these. So today, I want to show you how I debugged an issue that was submitted to the Shiny package itself. Now, just a heads up, this is not going to be as simple as the one I did last week. And that's mostly because this issue does involve some more advanced reactivity concepts. But in this video, I don't want to go too much into the specifics of reactivity itself because I want to try to keep this more about the debugging process. In another video in the future, I might do more teaching videos that actually teach you about Chinese and reactivity. But even if you are a beginner, you should still be able to pick up a lot of tips from this video. And when you do see what the bug was, that will also give you some advice on what you should avoid in your Shiny apps. Okay, so let's get started. Yesterday, I discovered a bug in Shiny. So what I did was what you should do when you discover bugs is I went to the Shiny GitHub page, I went to the Issues tab, and I submitted a new issue. Now, usually when I come to the GitHub, um, sorry, to the Shiny GitHub page, I like to browse through the first page of issues and see if there's any issues that were opened by someone who is not from the RStudio team and that has had no responses to it. Now, the reason I do that is because often those reports seem to actually have a bug in the Shiny app itself rather than a bug in Shiny, the package. So by going to those issues, I can sometimes help the submitter resolve their bug and then we can close the issue. So yesterday I did find one such issue. It is issue number 3120. Now, if you want to try to read through this report yourself and try to debug it and see if you um, you can solve it yourself, then feel free to pause the video right now and go to this issue. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. Otherwise, let's go through this together. So the title of this issue is Reactivity Dependency Not Working. Now, when I saw this title, I immediately knew I wanted to click into this issue because Either this is a very significant bug in Shiny, or it would just be a fun bug to resolve in someone's Shiny app. So looking through the bug report, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good bug report because it has all of the elements you need. So first of all, it has a description in the beginning saying what, uh, what is wrong. So there's a paragraph here, and honestly, by just reading it, you're not gonna understand too much, but I'll just skim through it quickly. So they say the reactivity and validation fails in the following example. In the sample code, there's a plot that's dependent on a reactive value, which is in turn dependent on a submit button. However, in certain situations, if you change the price to 10, submit, then change it back to 100 and submit, then the plot is not recalculated. So for them, the reactivity is broken in their app. Now, after this, um, they provided the system details. So this is what browser they're using, uh, what packages they have, uh, all sorts of information about their environment, which is great to put it, to put it into the bug report. Um, but I often skip looking at it initially, at least, as long as I can reproduce the bug. If I try to reproduce the issue and I cannot, then I go back to this and I see if there's anything that maybe changed between my ver my environment and theirs, and maybe that's the reason that they're seeing a bug and, and I'm not. Uh, but for now, I'm going to skip the session information. And then they have some code here, uh, which is great. And then they're saying to show the issue, you should run the sample code, change the value of the price to 10, click submit, change the value of the price to 100, click submit again. So this is really a good bug report because it gives you the code and tells you exactly what to do. So first thing I'm gonna do is let's see if it actually works. So I'm gonna copy the code, put it into my RStudio. And again, every time before you start debugging, you should clear your session. So I'm on Windows, so I press Control Shift F10. Um, I believe there's a, yeah, so there's a tool by here, Restart R. So whatever OS you're on, it'll tell you here what the 
shortcut for that is. So just do that to make sure that you have nothing in your environment, no packages attached, no variables, nothing. And then afterwards, um, what I do is I, I look at the code that they provided and I try to delete anything that I consider fluff, anything that I know is not actually part of the problem. So for example, a lot of times people would have all sorts of working directories or some environment variables that they set up. Or if, if they're using a shiny dashboard, then they have all these UI functions to create the dashboard itself, which are generally not really required for the bug itself. So I try to get their code to be as minimal as possible. So I said before that that this bug report is, is really good. So it is, but it's not perfect because I do see um, some lines of code here that are not necessary. So for example, there's a React log here that I can delete. Um, I might do a later episode about what React log is and how to use it. Uh, I also see that they're using uh, a package here that I know that is definitely not needed. So I'm deleting that from the UI. And then now the UI is pretty simple. There's just a numeric input price, a submit button and a plot output. So we probably do need all those because the bug report mentioned all of those items. Now moving to the server, uh, I see that there's an observer here and by just looking at it, I can tell it's not really doing much. It's just um, user experience. So I remove that. And what we're left with is a reactive. And they did mention this reactive in the code and it doesn't have too much code inside of it. So this is as small as it can get. And there's a render plot function. And again, there's not much in it. There's a rec statement and then a bar plot. So I think this would be the minimal code that we can use for this issue. So the first thing I do is make sure it runs. Okay, so it does run. Now, they said that the problem is that if you move it to 10 and then click submit and then move it to 100 and click submit again, it doesn't show up. Okay, I can see that that's true. Nothing shows up. Now, before I'm going to start debugging it, uh, one thing I like to do is, so they're claiming that the render plot function is, is not working, um, is not being called when it should. So I like to put a print statement here just to tell myself when this is actually being called because, for example, let's just make that smaller. If I click submit right now, you know, nothing changed in the plot itself. I can't see the change, but it did get replotted as we can see in the console. So adding the sprint statement here just kind of makes it easier for me to tell when something's happening. Now, again, if I change it to 10, nothing happened as we expected. And if I change it to 100, this is the bug that, they, um, that they're saying is happening. Now, if I just look at their comments here, they're saying that if you add an input submit, then it would work but they're saying that you shouldn't have to. So let's just verify that that's actually what happens. If I add an input dollar sign submit here, now what happens? 10 doesn't show the plot, 100 does show the plot. Okay, so they did find um, some hints as to what's going on. Now, I already know what's happening here and why this isn't working, but I'm gonna show you another small clue. If I move this submit um, dependency to be after the rec statement, then again, it's actually going to not work or not work as intended. Okay, so what's happening here? Let's look again at the code. So we have this reactive and what the reactive is doing is whenever the submit button is pressed, so by calling, uh, by accessing the submit input here, it's just saying that this should trigger a dependency on this reactive. We should just take the price input and subtract 20 from it. And notice that the price input is under an isolate statement. So this reactive will only run when the submit button is pressed, not when the price changes. So we have this net reactive variable that's going to be the price minus 20. And then in our plot function, we have, let's move this, that wasn't initially there. In the plot function, we have a rec statement. Um, and to the rec statement, we're giving the condition of if the price is over 20, then that's fine, then keep going. Print the, show the plot. If the price is under 20, then the rec will fail and don't show the plot. And notice that this is actually also inside an isolate. Now, this is actually the reason that the bug exists. 
And this is where the kind of advanced shiny reactivity concept comes in. So the way the shiny knows when to rerun a, a render plot function is by the first time that it runs through the, the code in the render plot function, it goes line by line until it exits. And every time it encounters a reactive variable, then it registers that reactive variable as a dependency for this code chunk. So every time it sees a reactive variable, it knows that when that variable updates, it needs to rerun this render plot function. So what happens is that as long as the price is over 20, we're not going to see a problem. But let's see what happens when the price drops below 20. So if we do 60, that's fine. If we do 21, that's fine. But now look what happens if we choose the value of 10. When we press submit, what happens? We've entered into this render plot function. We entered into this code. And the first line here is a rec line that says if the input is over 20, that's fine. If it's under 20, then stop, leave. It was under 20. So this is the only line that got run. We exited after this. And within this line, we don't actually have any reactive values. We do have one input dollar sign price that is a reactive variable, but it's inside an isolate statement. So we kind of, we told Shiny to suppress it and not consider it a reactive dependency. So when Shiny only ran this single line and then exited, it didn't have a chance to register any reactive dependencies. So the moment we dipped below 20 once, this plot function is never going to run again. Every before, when we were still in the 100, every time it went through this rec statement, it didn't register any reactive dependencies yet, but it kept going past this line. And once it reached here, it knew that when net changes, you should also rerun this function. But again, once we dropped below 20, it never got to reach these lines. This is the only line that it ran and it stopped right there and there were no reactive dependencies. So that is exactly the issue here. So now that we went below 20 once, doesn't matter how many times we go above it, it's just not gonna run because there's no more reactive triggers that will, that will cause this code chunk to enter. Now, the solution here then is to not use an isolate inside the rec. I, I personally have never put an isolate inside a rec statement. There could be cases where you should, but generally it's, uh, well, things like this can happen. And what I would do instead is I would do a rec state, a rec call on net being over zero, right? Because net is the price minus zero and we want to ensure that the price is over 20. So that's the same as saying that the net is over zero. But the difference between using net and price is that net does have the, does get invalidated when the submit button is pressed and it does still isolate price. So we still get the same behavior that was intended, but it also works as we wanted it to work. So now if we go down to 10, I'll just show that it works. Well, by works, I mean when it's under 10, you don't see a plot, but if we go back above 10, the plot does come back. And just to make sure, if we just change the price, nothing happens. We're not replotting. We're only replotting when we press the submit button. So there we go. So this was an example of a bug that I can definitely see why it was confusing. Um, I can see why you might think that the original code should have worked, but hopefully you, you learned something from this. If you have any comments, feel free to share them below the video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that's it. I'll see you next time.